What's going on YouTube fam? Mikey here shooting another high adventure video early morning. Look at this. We are right out on the lake. First thing, first thing, sun's not even quite up yet. It is actually gonna be a really gorgeous, gorgeous day. It's supposed to be like 70 degrees today. We're now, keep in mind, we're in the middle of December. This is totally new to me. Living in Idaho my whole life, like, there's not a snowball's chance in the hot place to have a 70 degree day in December. Not even really in November. Oh, almost forgot to turn the nav lights on here. There we go. Oh yeah, check that out. I actually do have this little, oh, well the light went out. They're supposed to be right up there. That's supposed to be lit up. So much for that battery lasting 30 hours. I might have gotten eight hours out of that. Not a big deal. Or well, the sun's gonna be up in about eh, 20 minutes, 25 minutes, so we won't need the light. But we do have our nav lights on our head. Raider beanie lighting the way, getting lit up like my raiders do on the typical Sunday. Man, my team is just, I feel like I keep watching the same, the same season on repeat. Start off hot and then lose 80% of our last games. Oh, all right, enough about football. We are here to hunt down some crappy, middle of the winter crappy. So the interesting thing about this bridge, we're getting ready to fish. First off, I haven't fished it yet. Secondly, I've talked with several guys when researching this bridge and just asking locals and stuff. They've told me there are tons of crappy stacked around this bridge, but, but one guy told me, he said, I don't like fishing it. He said, it is just so dang hard to catch those fish. He said, I only know a couple of guys that have like the skill to coax these fish to bite. So that's kind of the challenge for us today. Can we put our RuneScape level fishing of about 70 to the test? And can we coax these fish? Can we, can we draw these fish out from under this bridge and get them to bite? I don't know, we'll see, we'll see. Kind of the classic bridge fishing move for a lot of fishermen is to kind of moor themselves or tie up to the pilings and just fish straight down. We're not gonna do that. We're gonna move around a little bit. We're gonna see if we can get these fish kind of on a reaction strike, try moving, not just dropping straight down and see if that does anything different for us. So one of the first things I'm doing is I'm kind of just cruising under these pilings and keeping an eye on my down imaging to see if I can see any schools. This is really the first time I've been using the down imaging. I always use my 2D sonar. And I just haven't really taken the time to really learn and kind of familiarize myself with the down imaging, but it's super helpful, especially when you're looking for schools of crappy. And see this right here. I've got pilings right there. That's from the bridge. I just kind of learning how to read all this now. We've got probably some bait right down there, looks like to me. Uh, there you go. We might have a few few crappy hanging up right there. Just keeping an eye out, waiting to see if we see some schools. We should be able to see some here. Let's cruise over here. See, you can see right down here. See that? See all that right there? That's probably brim would be my guess for how small those are showing up on the screen. I'm looking for a little bit bigger markings on the screen. Okay, here we go, right here, look at that. See right there? I'll bet you money that's a little school of crappy right there. That's much bigger than what we're seeing over there. Guarantee it looks like there are about seven or eight of them stacked right in there. Oh, look there, okay, there are a few more right there. Oh yeah, there we go, there's a nice little pod. Definitely a nice little pod of them right there. So now, we just have to see if we can get them to bite. All right, first rod we're gonna drop down. I've got this nice little double rig here. I've got two little silver, I'm sorry, gold J hooks. We're working four pound test line. Got a weight at the bottom. What we're gonna do, reach in here, grab us a couple minutes out of our nice handy live well right in the bottom of our Hobie. How I'm rigging these guys today is I'm hooking them right through the lips, just like that. I actually had a subscriber suggest to do it that way and everybody has kind of their own way of rigging them some people like the dorsal fin some people like it through the eyes so far for me like through the lips 
probably has to be the best for me so far. Anyway, there you go. Nice little double rig, two minnows. What we're gonna do, I know my rod's six feet long, six and a half, I should say. We're gonna drop it down. I was looking on that, that down imaging. They look to be at about seven feet. So we're gonna set that right there. See if we can't get anything on a reaction strike here. I'm also gonna grab this rod, which is the same thing, small golden J hook, but I've just got a couple split shots. It's not a double, uh, not a double rig. Put a little minnow on this one too. Maybe drop it down at a little bit different depth and see, and kind of locate where these fish are at here. There you go, just like that. Let's drop this guy over here as well. All right, sweet. Two rods out, let's go find where that little school was again. See if we can't get something to bump it. How are you doing this morning? Good, doing pretty good. I'll do a lot better if I start catching something. <laughs> Not yet. They're down there though. I'm seeing them about 10, eight to 10 feet right now. You said you're getting some so far? Oh, nice. You caught that right in front of my boat, didn't you? Looks like a nice one. Man, that's mighty disrespectful. <laughs> nice. They're down there. They're definitely down there. It's a big old school down there. Come on. We're going right through them. There he is. Got him. Got him. Oh, no, he got off. Dang it. Just loaded on. Oh, man, I'm looking at this school. There's a big old school of them down there. Oh, man, can't afford to miss fish. Cannot afford to do that. You can do is rig back up and get back down there. Just a very, I mean, my rod tip, it just went, doom. I mean, that's all. I mean, it didn't hammer it, didn't, didn't throw it down, just, just probably came over and sucked it up. That was it. I'm trying to get over to this piling so we can talk. Oh, wait, we're getting a bite right here. Got him. Guys, we got him. This is our first fish. First fish. Oh, it's a nice crappy. Nice crappy. Come on over here. I was getting ready to tie up to this bridge. And we just got nailed right by the bridge. I think we'll go ahead and tie up here. Come here. I'll just lift him in. Nice. Nice. I was trying to get tied up to this bridge. And all of a sudden I look over. And again, light bite. All of a sudden I, my rod wasn't up. It was just down just a little bit. It wasn't shaking. It was just down. And it was like, oh, that's there's a fish just hanging on there. All right, we've got a first first stringer fish right there. Let's get our stringer out. This is the only time I don't mind these metal stringers. It's for small fish, like crappy. Beautiful crappy, good way to start the morning. Oh, well, finally getting the morning started, I should say. All right, let's get back into position. There's a school of them down there. This is interesting. This is actually about not 10 yards from the bridge. Moved out and kind of just suspended out here. That is a bite. Come on. Got him. Got him. We got him. Now we're cooking. Come on. Oh no, don't get tangled up with the stringer. Don't get tangled. There we go. There we go. Not as big as the first one, but it's another fish. Boom. There we go. That'll string her up. That'll string her up. Nice. Look at that. Man, again, that bite was just so light. Just doot, doot, doot. And got lucky that he was on there. I've got these handy dandy little scale and measure. I'm going to go say this goes 10. They need to be 8 inches to keep. Yep, 10. Boom. You know, you've been catching plenty of crappy when you know, you know the size of it before you even measure it. Not as big as this first one. We'll have to measure this first one up. I haven't done that yet. But it is a keeper. There we go. Boom. I feel like I've been chasing a school around these two these two pilings here. Because I'll roll over them and they'll be there. And when I back up to come back over, sometimes they're not there. Let's see if they're still down there. See, now this is interesting. Now I'm not seeing them on the down imaging. Like, I mean, there's just a big old school of them down there. Now I'm not seeing them. Oh, mother goose, I had him. 
There he is. Got him. Got him. This feels like a solid fish. It's like a solid fish. Yeah, yeah, it's a nice one. Now that was interesting. I popped that up. I missed him the first time. Come here. Then he came back and grabbed it. That might be a ticket right there. Oh, he's barely hooked. Oh, come here, come here, come here, come here. Come here, you slab out. Nice. Oh, there we go. Look at that right there. That's a beautiful, probably another 12 incher, 12 and a half incher. I missed him the first time and then it dropped down and he came back and popped it. We're just chasing that school. Just chasing that school. There you go. Check that out. Got three on the stringer and a high pressured bridge. I don't know about y'all, but I'll take it. There he is. Got him. Got him. Got him. Yes. Sweet. Just had to be patient. What do we have here? Oh wait, it's a bass? What? What? It's a large mouth. Well, that's not what I want. Bummer. Dang it. Get out of here. Man, I thought, yes. We got him. Now. Oh, well, guys, rain is starting to come down, which it didn't call for rain today. It's supposed to be 70 and sunny. Instead, it's probably like 64 and a light misty rain. Well, the fishing's definitely been slow. I have only seen one other boat. The gentleman that we were chatting with this morning, he was catching fish. I've seen two other boats roll up here and catch nothing. So I actually feel pretty happy. I'm pretty lucky that we've got three on the stringer. Oh, there's one, oh, there's one. Got him, got him. Drifted right through that school. Yep, it's crappy, it's crappy. Nice. Drifted right through that school. A little crappy in the rain, lift him in, yes. Yes, check that out right there, look at that. That's another nice one. That's another nice one. Probably about 12 inches would be my guess. Oh, oh man, we've had to work for him today. Really had to work for him today. But just, I mean, just hammering this school. Just going over and over and over. And I almost think I'm just making him mad. <laughs> and they're like, fine, I'm gonna eat it. But that's another nice one. Let's measure them up really quickly here. Let's see here. I'm going to say 12. He'll go 11. <laughs> uh, but he needs to be 8. So we are well in the clear. Nice fish right there. Nice fish. We'll go on the stringer. That's 4. That's 4. This is what I'm looking at right here. You guys see that right there? Those are our crappy right there. Hanging out. Hanging out in about eh, 12, 15 feet of water. Now watch, as I get closer to these pilings, check out how these pilings show up. All right, here you go. You can kind of see, there's a beam right there running up. Got another beam right there. You can see, look at that. You see the cross beams right there. And look at all those fish stacked in there. Those are all crappy. All that right there, crappy stacked in there. There's a cross beams right there. Here comes up another beam right there. But that's what we're fishing and those crappy are just stacked up in there and they're on the outside of it and we're it seems like the ones that are kind of on the outside of the beams are a little bit more active it seems at least what i've kind of found i think what we're getting is a reaction strike we just keep dragging it over them finally one of them that minnow probably just floats right in front of one of the faces of one of them and it's just like fine just and just scoops it up okay. Did I get him? Yep, got him, got him. Man, right on that piling. Nice. Oh, it feels like a solid He's taking a run. There we go. Oh, it's a large mouth. Dang it. 
Oh, I got all kinds of fish hanging out down there. Another large mouth, a little bit bigger than the last one, but not what I want. All these fish hold to this kind of structure. We got deep water, about 30 feet deep. Perfect wintertime structure. These pilings get nice and warm from the sun, and then they just kind of hold that heat. And these fish just gather around it like a little heater in the water. Not only do they feed off of it, that the minnows come along as well. Just kind of everything just kind of comes and gathers around it. That one looked like it got a bite. Got one. Got him right here, right here, right, right on the other side of this bridge. We were working the other side. Came around this side. Oh yeah, that's a nice one. That's a nice one. Yes, look at that. Look at that right there. That's no piggy of the deep. But when the crappy fishing's slow, I'll take it. I'll take it. I'm not gonna complain. That's a keeper. That's a keeper. Man, he devoured that. That hook is way down on the side. There we go. That is a pretty fish. That is a real pretty fish. Man, crappy are just one like one of the prettiest freshwater fish, in my opinion. Just those colors. Ah. Slow day of fishing. You just gotta stay patient. Gotta keep working the area if you know the crappy are in there. Now it's worth noting, guys, that I have actually tried all kinds of methods today too. I have put um, I've put some of the minnows on jig heads. I've thrown jigs. I've thrown several different color jigs. And um, look at that stringer right there. That's shaping up really nicely. That's shaping up really nicely. That's real pretty right there. But I have tried all kinds of methods for trying to get these crappy to hit today. And the one that just keeps working that I've had the most success on is just dragging these minnows. Not, not sitting in one spot. Just keep moving around. Keep following the school. And, and when we find them, we just sit over them. We don't sit over them. We just keep dragging the minnows through the school. And, and it's producing fish. It's very slow. It's very slow. But it's producing fish. Not a bad day for the first time ever fishing that bridge. I mean, I could definitely see why some people don't like fishing it. Uh, I was the only person I saw catching fish, minus the other guy that I was talking to this morning. He was catching fish. Definitely seems to be a morning bite. My guess is if there's a morning bite, there's probably an evening bite as well. But I mean, like, look at this. First time ever, first time ever fishing that bridge. To be able to put five on the stringer, I mean, there, there are no world beaters there, but those are all nice crappy. Those are all going to be really good ones to fillet up. So, I mean, I'm pretty excited. I <laughs> I feel like we, we did a really good job, actually. This lake is so massive, and everybody I've talked to this time of year, they say you want to find deep brush piles or bridges. Those are kind of like the two things you want to look for when you're crappy fishing. And I'm not really familiar with any deep brush piles. I think a lot of guys sink their own cover. Um, but I do know where the bridges are at. Unfortunately, everybody else does. So, I mean, when you're hitting bridges like that, you know that there are dozens of boats before you week in, week out that are just rotating in and out of those pilings. The thing it seems like you have to do though, you just have to stick with it. Like, I don't think you're gonna pull up on a spot this time of year and just start hammering fish out. Not, not on a high, high pressured spot like that on a bridge. Maybe on a deep brush pile, you know, a kind of a private spot, a little secret spot you might know. But on something like that that's really high pressured, you're probably not going to pull up and just start whacking fish this time of year. You just have to stick with it and just slow everything down and just be happy with, hey, I might get one good bite every 20, 30 minutes. And i got to make sure I capitalize on it. I did miss a couple other decent bites today, so we probably could have added to it, but I mean five crappy on the stringer for a day i didn't know i, I didn't i thought there might, i might not put anything on the stringer i'm excited i'm more excited though about this recipe i want to try today let's get back let's get all the cooking gear out and uh, let's cook up some fresh crappy and kind of a fun recipe i've been wanting to try all right first things first we got a filleting board we got one of our crappy we're gonna beat him over the head first and then we will get to filleting him. There we go. First cut. And down the back. Cut down the rib cage area there. Then I finish it off. 
going just like that. Look at that. Keep all the meat off the top there. Keep it in the fillet. Then I just go right under those ribs. Look, show. Cut that rib cage out. You start at the tail, right along that skin. And boom, look at that. You've got yourself a beautiful crappy filet right there. Mm, mm, mm. That is gonna be delicious. Let's get the other side down here. Ah, there we go. Look at that. Two nice looking filets. And we've got four more to go. We'll just do these for now. Be perfect for what we're after. And guess what? It started to rain. I swear, this is like the third or fourth video this year alone where I've started and then everything like just kind of falls apart as far as the weather goes. Not a big deal though. I went ahead and brought everything back here. So we have our wash. That we're gonna be putting our fillets in. We've got some oil we're gonna be heating up here. We're gonna fry these guys up with a little Louisiana fish fry and some real bacon bits. This is a recipe I wanted to try, and now that we got some crappy finally, we're gonna give it a go. We're gonna go ahead and get our oil heated up here. It's starting to rain again. I, I can't beat this weather, man. This weather has it out for me here. This is unreal. Like, there's literally just one small cloud above us. All right, we've got our breading on our plate. Next, we're gonna do is add bacon bits. And we are going to add the bacon bits pretty liberally into the breading and we're just going to kind of mix out all together with our hands there we go just like that now what i'm going to do is we have our egg wash here and i'm just going to take our my fillet i'm going to dredge it through the egg wash one time just like that now we'll take our breading take the fillet out of the egg wash bam just like that right in that breading Flip it a couple of times. So there's one coat, and you can kind of see the bacon bits are starting to stick to it, but there aren't a lot. So the trick to this is then to dunk it back in our egg wash here. Now we take it out of the egg wash again, bam, right back into the dry breading. Oh, uh, now that's coating up real nicely. Now look at that. See that, now that, was, that, that bacon's really starting to stick to that to that filet now. Now we're gonna take that bacon crusted filet, check that out right there, and we're just gonna drop it right in, like that. Let it fry up. I'm gonna go ahead and flip this first filet here. Oh yeah, look at that, check that out. On the other side, a nice golden brown, that's looking real good. Oh, man guys, it smells really good. I'm getting a lot of bacon scent coming off this, which I mean, pretty much anything cooked in bacon, like it can't be bad, right? I think this first filet is done. Think about crappy, it doesn't take long to cook, but that I've got extra thick breading on there. I wanna make sure everything gets nice and crispy. Oh yeah, that's looking pretty good to me. Check that out right there. Bacon crusted crappy. That looks like it's gonna be super, super crunchy. Look how thick that is. That crappy filet, I mean, it's a nice size, but the crappy is not very thick. But that, that that breading made it about twice as thick, maybe even three times. That looks pretty good. Smells pretty good too. Let's give it a try. <laughs> this thing is monstrous. Holy cow! It's like so heavy, so heavy. Let's do it. Let's do it. Had to give it a minute to cool down, but whoo, it's still hot. Here we go. Oh yeah, oh yeah. Double breaded, so it, it's super crunchy. I'm getting loads of bacon. Mmm. Crappy is just a delicious taste of fish too. Mmm. Now in this one, I didn't put any salt or pepper because I figured that bacon was gonna be pretty salty and I was right. If I had to put salt on this, it would've been way too salty. <laughs> it is really good. Look at that, right there. See that? This is definitely, a flavor explosion. Holy cow. Holy cow. You guys have to try this. This is good. This, for how thick this filet is, this would make a delicious sandwich. For sure. For sure. 
so hearty. I mean, you got meat on meat. It's a meat on meat crime going on right here. Mm. YouTube fam, incredible success on the recipe today. You guys have to give this a try. It is really good. A little bit of a slow day of fishing, but thank you guys for hanging out with me today. Hope you guys enjoyed the video and the recipe. And as always, I will see you in the next one.